coming, but I know, I know. Change has got to come, man. Ooh, yes, it is. Oh, man. What's up guys, how's it going? This is Brian from the Screams Podcast. And today we got a really, really special guest. One of my favorite artists. He's originally from Kansas, New York. Uh, moved down to Oregon. Um, started blowing glass there. Been in, uh, in the hip hop scene. Been in graffiti uh, scene. And moved on to glass where he's been striving. Again, you guys have seen me smoke out of this guy so much. So it's time now that you guys should need to learn. Who is the man behind this piece right here? It's the homie Les Moore. Hey. Yes, so what's up, brother? How you been? Oh man, good pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, bro. Thank you for popping up. Yeah, absolutely. I want to say I did start blowing glass in the Bay Area in California. Uh, okay. Yeah, Berkeley, California, to be exact, and ended up uh, in Oregon. But yeah, man, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Originally from New York, moved to California, and yes. then from, thank you, bro. And then from California, moved out to Oregon. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what made you do the move from New York to California? Uh, the lifestyle, man. You know, I, I, when you spend a couple weekends in jail for smoking weed in, in New York, back then it, it might sound crazy now because you go to New York and you breathe more weed smoke than you do air. Right. And it's very accepted and, and appreciated, but not. Back then, man, I, I can't tell you, I've spent days in, in jail just for smoking, you know, or being with people that were smoking weed. Yeah. Right. And um, I just wanted to do my art and and, and, be, and smoking weed lent itself to the creati creativity. So I just wanted to be in a place where it was accepted and appreciated, you know? Right. So I just always knew that, you know, plus I was, I was growing weed and it was tough, man. You always felt the law looming, like it's gonna get me, it's gonna get me. And if I keep down this path in this place, you know, um, I'm gonna end up in jail and I'm never gonna have the opportunity. So once I did have the opportunity to make it to California, I, I, I made it happen and didn't look back, man. I just, yeah, that was it. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I mean, yeah, definitely like having to look like over your shoulders so many times does get you antsy, you know, and being able to, to put yourself in a position where, uh, you know, you feel a little bit better, you feel a little bit safer, and again, still at that time, you know, it's still, still legal to go ahead and grow and sell recreationally, like, not like what we're doing today, but I mean, being in Cali, a lot of people already know Cali for smoking a lot of tree and being able to move a little bit easier than you can in New York, for sure. Oh, yeah. It was it was just becoming recreational. Well, not recreational. I'm sorry, medicinal when okay. I first moved to California. And um, This was around when? Uh, this was like 2000... I want to say like 2009. Okay. Like early 2000s. Yeah, like yeah. 2009, something like that. And it, it had been medicinal and you would be able to go into... You know, with a recreational, with a with a card, you'd be able to go into the, the dispensaries and, and, and get, you know, get your flour, get your oils and all that stuff. And I was, uh, I was just getting put on and learning how to make hash. And, you know, I knew how to make bubble hash prior to that, but I was learning how to make, you know, the concentrates, uh, oh, BHL shit. and stuff like that. And um, that was what kind of allowed me the finances to get started in blowing glass because it can be very expensive when you're starting out and um, people who were saying I was overdoing it because I felt the freedom right like right. I was smoking outside in public I was you know I wasn't afraid I was like I knew the cops weren't gonna put me in jail okay you know I and, and, and I was just overdoing it smoking all the time just in, enjoying the freedom of it and um, just going hard on my my, my dreams because uh, you know Everything is within reach in life to a certain degree. If you're going after it, it's kind of coming to you in a way, right? right. In a certain sense. And um, when I was back east, I kind of felt all these roadblocks. You hit these speed bumps, and you're moving towards your thing, but then something happens, and it's it can be anything. But certainly, jail will fuck you up. And 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 when I came out here, and there was not those major speed bumps, I felt like, oh, I could really go after it. Anything is possible. So I didn't fully have the money to do glass. But every penny I got went towards glass because mm -hmm. that's all I knew was art. Right. Coming from graffiti, I you know I did so many hours of community service. I spent less time in jail for doing graffiti, literally no time in jail for doing graffiti, 
but I spent weekends in jail for smoking weed. That's crazy. That's wild. And I thought that was wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Because, like, again, like, graffiti is art and it is expressing yourself uh, for sure. But you're thinking because you have to, quote unquote, like, vandalize oh, it's certain areas and stuff like it's that. Not- you know what I mean? Like, you would think, all right, you're going to have to do the time for pay to pay for, like, you know, cleaning it up and all this stuff, or at least community service and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But I mean, for something as simple as just this, just doing it by yourself, chilling, relaxing, having a good time, this year you're, you're throwing in jail. Look, I'm smoking chilling. that. I'm not doing anything to anybody's property or anybody's body. Exactly. Right. And if I'm a business owner and you write graffiti on my gate, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. it. It all depends on the graffiti person, but I don't want anybody doing anything without my permission to my stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and I get that. But graffiti is graffiti, and it's a lifestyle, and it's it is what it is, you know. And it, and it, it's you know, it's. I just always assumed that I would spend weekends in jail. You know, I've been arrested and let go the same night for graffiti. Never yeah. even went into a cell. Just sat there and and, you know. But with weed, I go in on Friday. I don't get out till Monday morning. Damn. You know. Yeah, it's crazy. That's some crazy. crazy shit. And sometimes I wasn't even smoking. I mean, I was smoking, but I didn't have it on me. In my mouth, you know, like it was like I was a part of a. Crew. It was usually somebody else that had it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Or, or, or was presently smoking, and I was in the group, you know, and it was then the maybe sesh. three or four of us, you know, finding ourselves in a cell. And you just being a part of the, like literally just chilling. You could easily say, "Hey, I was." You could have easily been passing by and been someone who was just, uh, literally just passing by. And that group was smoking, but because yeah. the, you were there now, at the right don't time. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it to sound like every time a cop caught us smoking, we went to jail. It wasn't like that. But when you smoke every day, several times a day, especially because it's an outdoor culture in New York. Like when I came, any other state I went to, there was you would go to somebody's house, right? Like bongs aren't really, they weren't really a thing back then for New Yorkers. We would smoke blunts, right? So you're standing outside, you're gutting a blunt, you're smoking a blunt. And they're thinking about when's the next blunt that we're all going to smoke, you know? And it's just a part of the day outside. But in other places, you're inside, you're protected. Nobody, no cops are going to come to the house and pull you out. And so, you know, every now and again, you get a cop who is, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's up to their discretion, I guess, but they would uh, go above and beyond and take you to jail. You know, it's like, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You're not, you're not getting any special stripes, but, yeah. But, I, you know, it I makes mean, that's, that's where they co- go with, like, saying, like, uh, I guess we're just having to fit that quota. You know what I mean? That's right. That's that's, right. That's, I guess that's where that saying comes. I'm not, Honestly, I'm not even sure if they have a quota that they have to fill in or I anything like do. that. I think it's, you know. I think they do, because I noticed at the end of the month, they're pulling more cars over. Yeah. You know? No, it like just that. makes more sense, like. Like, yeah. it's, if you're pulling us over at normally the end of the month or doing more situations at the end of the month, it makes sense because that's where people have the most amount of money so they could get out of it with paying whatever they have to pay for and get out of it. Or them too. That being said, because other jobs do it, it makes sense that a police officer's job quota would be, you know, go ahead and get this get this many like Look, quote unquote bad people everybody got a job and nobody's gonna start working right at the beginning of the morning right so like beginning of the month you know i gotta get this stuff done at the end of the month and usually you wait till the last minute most people are really good at procrastinating yeah right and i don't think cops are any different so they might be at the end of the month and like yo i only got a couple tickets i need to knock out a few you know so it's easy to in new york pick up somebody for smoking weed or make a couple quick pullovers you know they might say oh 28th i need five you know and you just get it get it done uh-huh. but man fuck police sorry if anybody <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of good hey. cops there's a lot of good cops but there's there's more that you know your reasoning behind becoming a police officer isn't always the best i'll just say that some people like that power right and they abuse that power right. with having power comes responsibility and some people aren't very responsible with it no, absolutely, absolutely. That's, that that's makes that makes a hundred percent sense. Um, I mean, like you said, not every single one is a bad guy, but all of them know that, 
like putting on that badge and putting on that uniform, like you know what it represents on a negative scale. Mm -hmm. We know what you're trying to do positively, but on a negative scale, negative scale, really, really understand what it means. You know yeah. what I mean? We we need police. We need we need some structure to society, but at the same time, um, I'm not so sure we wouldn't police ourselves and we wouldn't you know do a bad job on our own. But I don't really I don't. I just grew up in a place where it felt like a police state. So I have my I perspectives, okay. you know, on police. And that's not always the case uh, in other places, you know. And, and if something goes wrong, something happens to my family, you know, you better believe I'm calling the police and I'm hoping that they're there to catch the criminals, you know. But with that said, you know, that's not always the case. They're not always catching criminals. They're sometimes... Yeah. Catching the quota. Yeah, I don't really love this. I don't really love this subject. Let's talk about I that. Mean, let's go ahead and fucking switch it up, man. I mean, uh, like we say, we we moved out of there that we could be in California, you know, a state where you're able to enjoy yourself a little bit more with cannabis yeah. and pursue my passion and pursue your passion and everything. And it's where I, I guess I'm guessing you fell in love with glass in California. But yeah. I guess the question is, what was that? What, what was that moment that said, you know what? Oh, yeah. I want to go ahead and make glass. I want to be a glass blower. So, uh, I was, uh, I was in the, in the, going to all the high times events and all of the weed events and really enjoying myself. And uh, coming from the graffiti art world, I was always looking for the place where I could make a name for myself. Right. And sort of find my, you know, my voice. And um, I saw a bunch of people were taking classes at a glass studio and getting involved and I didn't want to just jump in and be a part of what everybody else was doing, but I, in the background, had an interest in what they were doing. Like, damn, what are they doing over there? Yeah. And after it died down a bit, I found myself able to go into this studio and meet some of the people and watch some of the people um, who were blowing glass. And instantly, I mean, if you if you're into art, you could become mesmerized by you know just looking at fire yeah. is mesmerizing, and then manipulating this this thing. That is, it's, it's just hard to understand what it takes to manipulate this glass. So I remember um, being mesmerized and feeling like, I want to know how hard this really is. Because some of these people that I was around, shout out to Phil Siegel, when I saw him blowing glass, he made it look yeah. easy. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I just didn't know, like, the level of difficulty. So uh, I had this friend, shout out to Toph, haven't seen him in forever, but... He, I offered him some hash to try to make a rig right in front of me. Mm. I said, I'm going to give you this sour diesel if you could make a rig. You know, I don't want the rig. Right. I just want to see you make it. He's like, I don't know if I could do it. It might break. I was like, I don't care. I just want to see you do it. Because I knew he was in the beginning stages. And I'm not so sure he ever pursued blowing glass, but he was one of the people that were there kind of. So he got on the torch and he got so close to finishing the rig. And I knew he was at a beginner stage. Now, this is no knock on Toph, but I said if he could do it and get to that level right. in this amount of time that I knew he was doing it, I knew that I could do it. Because I'm nobody special. I'm not some super talented anything, but I knew that I had the same level of dedication right. as at least my friend Toph. So I was like, all right. I saw him do it, and then I, I, I ended up Renting out, renting out a space. I was trading sour diesel for a bench space, right? And I was just making it happen through the hash, and um, and, and that was it, man. I mean, it, that's how it happened. It happened literally overnight like that, where I was in the studio, I saw him do it. Next thing I know is so Phil put me on the torch and said, "Here, try to do this thing that's called a Maria, where you push the glass in and it makes a Maria." Mm, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I made a Maria, and he was like, and. A couple of people, I thought they were lying to me. You never know when somebody's being honest. They say, oh, that's really good. You know, some people like to feed your ego or just not be right. mean and say that's shit. But I asked people, I was like, yo, they were like, if that's your first Maria, that's pretty good. So I was like, all right, I got a chance at this. So I dedicated, I said right away, I said, I'm dedicating the next three to five years to this shit. Damn. And because I knew that I had my own voice in this. I knew I just... Everything else, there was people that were way better than me. I knew some crazy tattoo artists, I knew some crazy graffiti artists, I knew all kinds of artists that I just felt like they were light years ahead of me. But with this, right. the stages Glass was in, in around 2011, I was like, people are starting to share information, 
is attainable and I got my own original voice right. that I could bring to the table. So the timing was right. I just jumped in head first. I said, that's it. I, I, every class I could take, every hour I got, I, I mean, right away I was spending like, you know, minimum eight hours a day, every day in this shop, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and, and I, I, man, I was trying to skip steps, right? So people would make a spoon, but I was trying to make rigs, <laughs> okay. right? I was like, I wanted to make a whole oil rig before I make the spoon. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to get to my goal. Like I wanted, I wanted to make sculptures. I wanted to make these characters. I already knew what I wanted to make, but I didn't want to do this other steps. So I had a whole pile on my bench of broken rigs. Oh shit, right? okay. And then finally I said, I'm gonna stop being hard headed. And I went back and I made the spoons and the Sherlock's. And you know, ultimately it started with marbles. Gotcha. But then it became spoons, Sherlock's, and all of that stuff. And oh man, it, uh, I knew what I wanted to make, but it was like, you know, three years, two, two three years before I actually made my first full on. Full on rig. Okay, it's so I mean, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a process to finally get to where you are. I mean, it's a process to still continue where you're going, right? Still, like, I, like I still it's... haven't made the things I truly want to make, which I'm not even sure I know exactly what that is. So I'm still trying to figure out what I want to say. Like, everything has a story, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to express an idea through these pieces. And I'm living my life, and the life I'm living, I'm trying to reflect in my artwork. So now I have this, these grander things I want to make that are going to tell an even deeper story. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it makes sense because uh, with the description, how you said with the warriors, with the elephants, with the vultures, that according to, you know, what, what you've written on most of them, I think every single one of them, there's only going to be a hundred of, you know, each model. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. I know this one. And that's is... to make them more valuable, as well as to force myself to come up with a new design and graduate onto something else. Because I've seen. I feel that. When I first started, I saw people just living on one design forever. Right. And, and shout out to you if you could do that. But I wanted to grow as an artist and force myself to grow, and I wanted to create value in my artwork. Glass breaks. So if I make a hundred of them, there might only be, you know, sixty or seventy or fifty. As time goes on, right, you know, and those that are left will hopefully go up in value. You know, that's the idea, at least. No, absolutely, and I mean, it does make them a little bit more exclusive uh, to like the owner knowing that, like, you know, they have this out of this many. You know, and it does make sense. It does make sense for you to go ahead and kind of push yourself as an artist to go ahead and come up with something new. Yep. What is going to be the next thing, you know? Um, you We're at 90 right now. I, I just finished 89 of the Moriers, which oh, I can't shit. believe I did 89 of them. So I only got 10 left. 10 left. So if you left. want one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's only 10 left. And I'm, and I'm uh, excited to finish up this series. And um, I don't exactly know what's next, but I'm excited to, um, to build from there. I might, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'll just keep that to myself. I'm, I feel that. Well, I, I'm gonna let everybody know right now. There's only nine left because oh, I'm I, I want number one hundred. I just I'm saying that right now. Right. I want the last one. <laughs> uh, whatever it looks like, however it's gonna look like, you already know. Let's That's get the, there, man. We're we're gonna get there. We're definitely gonna get there. But I mean, <clears throat> uh, that being said, because we're so close to number one hundred, um, what was the idea behind the Morier? So the Moria was born out of a piece that came before that called the Nomad. Okay. The Nomad represented my travels and journeys through life, actually like to get into glass, right? Mm -hmm. So they're all kind of walkers. They're all kind of moving to, from one place to another. And uh, that's what we're all doing is we're going from one place to another. I mean, even if you're sitting still, time's going by, right? It's the passage of time and what we do with that time. Right. So once I got to the Moria, I had developed this idea into their creators, and they're creating something. So they started to have spray cans in their hands, and they're smoking. Because I, I think of weed or hash, you know, as uh, um, it's just conducive to creating. Okay. And whether you create in the kitchen or you're creating, you know, 
being creative with your life might be the job you're taking right now to get you to the next job. Mm -hmm. You know, to the, to the next endeavor, whatever it is. You should think creatively about your life. Your, your life is your own piece of artwork. Whatever you're doing in your life, right? So mm -hmm. you might smoke weed and meditate and just dream big. And that's what I would tell you, just, just dream bigger than you think and take steps to get there and, 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 and those steps and those, that smoking that weed, that's what comes through in the Moriers and the spray can is kind of the idea of creating something, you know what I'm saying? So right. the Moriers are just a reflection of me smoking, drawing, spray painting, you know, and just creating something that's a part of my life and that next step, that next, yeah, that next endeavor, idea, whatever it is. That's crazy. And from there, it went from the Moriers over to, <clears throat> uh, I think you did the Vultures after that? Yeah, the Vultures came the after that. There were some elephants before that. So when my daughter was born, I created a, 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 a series called The Little Gigante, because she's my little everything, right? Okay. And Little Gigante was a play on words of less and more. Right. Right? Little Gigante or Little Gigante. And it was also double meaning for my, my, my daughter. She's my little... Gigante, she's my everything. Right. You know, so I uh, and and the elephants, um, they're 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 very family orientated, and there's a lot of love inside the elephants, and they're very emotional creatures, which I am as an artist. You know, very emotional, not just an artist, but you know, I'm just an emotional person, and um, I've, I've always been drawn to elephants, and so I created this elephant, and she couldn't. It's funny because she couldn't hear or understand what I was saying when she was born. It's kind of like a little potato. Right. You just got to care for this thing that can't hear you or anything. So I made them without ears. Oh, and it shit. was also representative of, I don't care what anybody says about my artwork. This is my personal thing for me. Yeah, So yeah, I'm absolutely. cutting off any criticism. And I think that's kind of important because if people will make one piece and wait for a response from people, if people don't respond to your artwork, you try something and you're always going to be trying to please the crowd. Right. <clears throat> no, you yeah. please yourself first. No, and, mm -hmm. and that's where, where that's where I believe focus is on art. Like, yeah. the crowd doesn't know what they want. Yeah. They really don't know what they want. Right. Because what the crowd is always looking for, they're always looking for what's in. Yeah. What's trendy? What's what's hitting? You know that vibe or those likes or those falls or whatever it whatever is. Whatever just speaks right? to whatever speaks to them because they don't always know what speaks to them until they see it. You exactly. Know? And then they try to figure it out and they look into it. Why do I like this piece of art? Mm -hmm. but there, then, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's le there's more visual and absorbing people in this world more than people that ex like exorb or like you know push out yeah. their creativity towards the world. And that being said. Um, a lot of people live in like the way I like to see it a lot of people live in this circle right and the circle is the comfort zone where all the cool shit is <laughs> all the all whatever's fucking dope it's in that fucking circle right mm -hmm. and then what's outside of that circle whatever is not cool whatever is like isn't in whatever nothing like no one knows about this right, right? and as creators we live in that line in between that circle and like yeah, that outside yeah. of like what's not cool and yeah. the reason why i say that is because like literally we're the ones that are like pulling stuff not, in yeah i mean not, not not trying to sound cocky and saying like we're grabbing the stuff that's saying this is what's cool come inside like yeah, come enjoy too. but like it's something that we we live in between so that that way we could i guess you could see we you could say we're the power source we're the power source that continues to go ahead and push, you know, everything in that circle of what's cool, what's, you know, what's in and all that stuff. Because we're the ones that allow ourselves to be, uh, be able to be in that establishment of creating, of being able to um, expand our mind and see, you know, what is cool, what isn't cool. You know, because it could yeah. be cool to us or like, or we could try it out and be like, you know what, nah, never mind. You know, you know something that's weird is that I never really thought about cool too much. I always I'm, I'm thought about, using I know, it I know what you're saying. I know yeah. what you're saying. It's, it's sort of build off that from my own personal experience. It's always been, you know, we all have stuff in common. And if we just look within and do what is a part of our own life, other people are going to find that in common. So we all have our own perceptions from our circles. Our life is our circle, and we're drawing from our own experiences. Mm -hmm. But I think that other people relate rather than you trying to relate to other people. 
if that makes sense, right? So yeah. you're gonna show your life for what it is, someone's gonna find something that they relate to. And and that's what I think unintentionally becomes really cool. Like, yo, you know what? I had that same experience. And I, I, I relate to that and I appreciate that. And that's cool, man. That's cool that you been through that, cause mm -hmm. I've been through that. And you know, you got that experience from it. Yeah, a lot of people have those ideas and it's, again, it's the reason why people, going back to that circle analogy, it's the reason why people are so um, happy to be in that circle because once they are- It's comfortable. Yeah, once they're able to see some like artists or creatives being able to uh, experience things that they have as well, mm -hmm. you know, that's where like it, it hits. And once it hits, yeah. you know, like, yeah. Absolutely. So, I, you know, like I was saying, I draw from my, my experiences and then later on after I did the Moria to get back to the, the Vulture, when that came along, um, it's one thing to be a creative artist and um, I've talked about this uh, before on another um, interview, I don't know if it was a podcast, but it, I got into some tax trouble. I think a lot of glass artists find themselves, you know, in a situation where they got to be businessmen. Right. You know, and we may not all be cut out for that. I know I am not, right? So, end of the year comes and I'm filing taxes and I owe money to the IRS. And me and my uh, my daughter's mom split up and that's always a problem, right? That's always a, a struggle you gotta get through. And it's all kinda happened to me at once. Right. And I felt like I was being picked apart by my government and by my kid's mom, and I just felt like, if this is all gonna happen to me, and this is my experience, I gotta flip this negative experience into a positive experience, and I felt like vultures were eating me alive. Mm. That was where I kinda ended up at. So I started designing these vultures, and I started trying to make them like these big wing looming creatures, like, and um, as I went through that series, I start saying, you know, I can't make it that this vulture is eating me alive. I got to make it more so that this is a manageable problem because of okay. if you turn your problems into bigger than you, they're going to crush you. Right. So I started making the vultures wings get smaller, making them cute, making okay. them like, you know what, so no matter and what your problems are, and, that's and people, got, people yeah. got crazy problems out there, but the thing is, you've got to put them in perspective. It could always that's be worse. fucking hilarious. You got to make them manageable. So turn your problems into something cute. That's cute. You think you're going to get me? I'm way stronger. I'm way, I'm bigger than this body. I'm yeah. a spiritual monster. Uh -huh. And I'm able to handle whatever comes my way. Right? So there's nothing too big. I can conquer whatever is, whatever's in front of me. And that's the idea of making the vultures more cute. So there's a story. Um, I remember the first uh, the first series on vultures and everything when uh, when you started making those and they looked sick. And I remember when I uh, it was me and my boss back in the day from La La Land. Um, me and my old boss were going back and forth and we we're like we need to get a second drop from Les. And uh, you know that's where the idea of like okay what else do we get other than the warriors other than the vult like what else are we gonna expand to right and. That's when he was like, okay, let's get the elephants, let's get the vultures, the big ones, the the ham, uh, the uh, the jammers and stuff. And we remember the first vulture that you, that you made for us, right? And it was yeah, the, the big, big creatures and everything that you were talking about. And uh, from from a point of view of someone receiving those glass pieces, you're like, yo, this is fucking crazy. Look how big this fucking wing is. Like it's it's huge. You know what I mean? And then when we made that second order and we get it back and it ends up being the smaller one with the smaller wings, and RM, we were just like, what happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Literally, it was like, yeah, I get it. I get it. What, what happened to what? Yeah. What happened to all this? You know? Yeah. But like, uh, you going back to what you said and everything, like, it's, uh, it's something that when we saw we took our own idea from it you know we we're like okay maybe is he he's maybe trying like a new style or this is and that but again it goes back to the art and it goes back to what's telling my story exactly 
Exactly, telling your story through the glass. So yeah. you now explaining the fact that like it went from this big monstrous uh, creature. Which it was a heavy piece, right? With the big wings, it's a heavy, it's a lot of weight and you hold right. it and that's what it was. It was, I felt the weight on my shoulders of these problems. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I need to let go of that. Yeah. And, and treat my day to day without this weight on me. Right, 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 right. So I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so now it all it all makes perfect sense. Now that like, you know, when it became smaller, that's when you were a little bit more comfortable yeah. with your situation. The pieces have to evolve and change. Mm -hmm. And people see one piece and they want, oh, I want that, right? Right. And I'm like, I need to express myself. I need to evolve regardless of what my audience might be trying to push me towards. Mm -hmm. And that's a struggle sometimes as an artist is you yeah. want to satisfy your audience. Right. But you have to put yourself first. And I knew that some people were gonna feel, oh, it's not what it was, and you know what? I can't get caught up in that. I have to express myself. And the fact of the matter is, people liked it better, some people didn't like it, but it told my story. And yeah. once you hear the story, once you understand the story, maybe, you, like we were saying, what's cool, you know what, that's cool because I'm going through some shit and I realize it's weighing me down. Yeah. No, and now yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the lighter one so I can always think about my problems while I'm getting high, releasing myself of these problems. I can say I'm letting go of that weight. I'm looking at this cute problem now yeah. instead of this big looming thing. And it's cool to look at some some scarier stuff and, 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 and heavier things, but at the same time, that's not where I was at at that time. And I'm res you know, respecting right. my journey. No, yeah, yeah. you have to it makes sense that you have to find that balance between the people that follow you and want to support you yeah. and your art because again like as an artist your art could change drastically yeah. picasso went from that blue face to all of a sudden you know vibrant colors and all this stuff so you got these people that were like or like before that he had the nicer colors then went into his blue face yeah. so you got people who uh really like and wanted to support that kind of art to all of a sudden what the hell is going on over here yeah you know so it does it makes sense that you have to find a balance of where your your art becomes almost a brand because mm -hmm. it it's something that people want is something that people want to support and when you know you get to a a, a place where you're starting to uh, produce these not mass production but i mean as a small business where you know you're making a couple yeah. orders for a couple different brands and stuff like that it's hard to go ahead and um counter counterbalance that where it's uh the art people want to see and the art that you want to see yes yeah, a fine line and and you gotta follow your heart first and you also gotta pay your bills yeah and yeah. um that's 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 the real tricky part so how long do you follow your heart before you realize you know this bill's way past due and I've got to make something that's going to sell. Mm -hmm. It's a balancing act and you just, you're blessed if you can make what you want and that lines up with, you know, what the people want. That's a blessing and mm -hmm. that's when you're really, you know, you're, you're really in the right place at the right time as they say. Yeah. Everyone, I believe, is, is blessed with the right time at the right place. It's all about the reaction that you have at that moment in Being time. Being prepared. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and all sometimes all it takes is that preparation of just saying fuck it yeah you know that little fuck it situation where you're like you know what let's run it let's do it you know yeah there's yeah. definitely a level of that I, I i can definitely see what you're saying however i would just say that um you can't be so gung-ho on the fuck it that everything gets fucked no right 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 right, 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 so, right. so when you want to talk about like I really like making these provocative pieces, um, but there's only a small audience for these provocative pieces, right? Mm -hmm. You're only going to pay some bills, you know, right. and, and you're going to turn a lot of your audience off. But if you are smart enough to create some provocative pieces and then other more acceptable pieces, mm -hmm. you can afford to make more provocative pieces. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think you see that with um, music a lot. You know, people take these big risks and they lose half their audience on an album, you know, and they get heavy criticism for it. You know, like a lot of people, we love their first album. Yeah. And then they change it up a lot for their second album. 
and you're like, what the fuck happened? I you know, feel you. That rookie you. drop, that that rookie drop, when it's a success, it's hard to bounce back with something else. Yeah, yeah. And to make it better, because you're not in that situation no more. Yeah, you absolutely. Know I mean? yeah. It's very rare that you can match that level of energy when you're that hungry for your first thing. You know, people drop that first album, they're hungry. They spend a lot of time making it and expressing themselves. You know, and then that second album, they feel pressure and they. You know, but again, it go it goes to that like that. If that was possible so accurately, it would happen for everybody in this world. That's right. That's you right. know, it, it's it's just that one in a million that that's able to do so. And again, that one in a million happens in just being. Like I was saying, I, I guess I would say I would say like that fuck it belongs in that right specific time because that's if you said saying. fuck it if you said fuck it in everything then that's you're exactly fucked my point. you're fucked yeah right yeah. place right time you know there, yeah, there's, no, there's, there's albums that would hit 10 years from now that miss right now yeah, yeah sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. artists are just ahead of the curve they're just ahead of the game you know and they're feeling stuff artists are very feely people and most people don't really feel those feelings until they grow into them yeah you know and that's that's part of the i don't want to say problem the challenge for an artist is to feel what they're feeling and express it in a way that people can understand it and then that's when you get the big audience behind it is when you i know what they what they're doing with that or maybe they don't know what they're doing but they feel it they say yeah. oh I, I feel you I feel, yeah, 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 absolutely. I think that's a lot with my artwork, honestly. I think people don't really fully understand what the Moriers, Vultures, or even Elephants are about, but they feel it on an unexpressible... <clears throat> a lot of people, I feel, in the glass world, um, because I've had this happen to me, um, where you see a piece you're getting emotionally involved with it you really like it but then what stops them and what tr like triggers them into thinking otherwise is hearing the name of the person that made it hearing the amount of uh of money you spent on the piece uh to make it more appealing to to the eye or whatever i've had this guy next to a buck mothership collab right and people were interested in looking at this thing and trying this thing including the guy who owns the buck mothership right but what uh turned people away was all of a sudden when, when i said the price and like it's i'm not gonna say every single person who's into glass and smokes out of heady rigs or artist rigs like think um think the same way as it but when it comes to like people uh, recognizing the art and what uh, what's behind it, instead of I when they don't like recognize the art behind it, instead they think about just the price or the artist that was in or the accolades that he's gotten publicly because of. Uh, but I know that Buck Mothership sort of collab was ten times more than the price of this. You can do the numbers on your head when you're thinking Mothership well, and Buck. Those you're are like two of my favorite artists. So right? Like that's fucking huge. Yeah, yeah. Buck and Depe are leaders. Yeah, in the it was, I believe and, Scott. Scott was the one. Yeah, it was a Scott know, those, Depp. Those uh, are legends. Buck. And um, as as highly as I might think of myself, I'm nowhere near these guys. So um, I'm not sure I because uh, I'm not I'm not that's not that's not a cheap piece, but no. it's not as far from. You know, you're not buying a name here, you're buying the amount of work. Right. You know, I'm not selling you on a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton, which is not worth the money that you're paying for it, that you're buying the name. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and, and this rig specifically, I know for the both of us, it was it was emotional on both ends because, I mean, it's something that I love. And, I mean, that we I, I would say we both love, which is hip-hop, right? But it was a challenge for... I guess someone as a consumer to be like, you know, go ahead and do you, do whatever you want to do. And it was a challenge for you to go ahead and produce something, you know, uh, that you wanted to get done. When the idea is like, all right, I'm making this for a client. Let me go ahead and, you know, uh, recognize what the client wants. But I mean. Well, a lot of making glass is problem solving. And this particular piece posed a couple of problems that I did not know how to do at the time of making this piece. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, there's some trial and error 
you know, um, especially when you're asking somebody for something that you've never made before, you've got to figure that out, problem solve, and try and trial and error. So um, I never made this uh, the Kango before, and fitting that on the head, you know, there's a couple ways. There's a lot of ways people would go about that, but the way that I wanted it to look, the way it looked, yeah. I had to do a technique that I had never done before. I had to make a couple of them, and um, it was it was tricky for me, but. I wasn't charging more for that. I can only charge what the final outcome of the piece is. This is one of the more elaborate, elaborate warriors I've ever um, made. And um, I, I remember, if I'm not mistaken, I remember hooking you up for what you got, you know, and uh, not not quite. Shout out to Lala Lam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. I mean. I knew I wanted a piece, and it's so funny the way it went through, right? Because the this was this one was a part of the first drop that you did with us at the shop. Yeah, right? which this is one of the first jammers that I ever um, made, and um, and this was in an in in effect to actually meet the price point and to have something people could bring around with them. Right. Right. So people didn't want to spend two plus thousand dollars on a piece. And you know if I can get something out there for you know between six and a thousand at the time, then these were these were it. and they could bring them to the to the sesh. Yeah, because these these, these came out important. these came out roughly twenty twenty one twenty two twenty one. Yeah, I don't even I don't even remember at the time. Because I think I started I started working at the shop around twenty twenty, and then it was the year after is when they when uh, Bossman finally gave me a chance to go ahead and like. You know, hey, let's check out this artist, let's check out that yeah. artist, stuff like that. And I'm grateful that you, uh, in, in, you know, invested in me and, and, and sent them my way. Yeah, I think this is one of the first bandanas, too, um, because of this was, uh, we were going through the pandemic and everybody had to wear masks and stuff like that. So I started creating the bandanas. So. I thought the bandana thing was because of graffiti. Because you have to hide your face and you can't really let, like, because you can't really, like, let people see yourself, you know? And, like, you want to promote it, but you, that being said, you promote with a so, name or something you put up. But, like, you cover your face, no, but you don't want to... There's truth to that. So, less more is definitely about duality. Everything is, like I was saying with the Little Gigante, you know, there's mm -hmm. a duality to everything about the less more, you know, less and more. Coming from, from negative to positive, you know, and, um... Same thing with the bandana, same thing with, you know, the, the, the level of interpretation, you can just get high and, and, and think about these things and hopefully come to your own conclusions. But the bandana was perfect because okay. it represented the time that it started at was the pandemic and it actually fits if we're not in the pandemic because you would wear that for graffiti or whatever activities you might need to wear a bandana for. No, that definitely makes sense, bro. Yeah, that definitely. Because I didn't want to put masks it's, on, and then we no, get right, out of the pandemic, right, 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 and now right. they all wearing masks, and you're like, why are they wearing masks? So the bandana made the most sense, and and artistically speaking, I think it looked cool. Hey, you know? bro, the amount of people that I hear saying, "Yo, the fucking bandana is sick as fuck," the bandana is sick as fuck. Like, yeah. you you nailed it. You nailed it hard as hell on this bandana, like. The fact that the bandana is UV too on most of them as well. Yeah, most like, of them. Yeah. And you and literally at, like down to like adding the detail of the of so the, the actual Paisleys, print on there. The paisleys are, I designed myself. I don't like to just take a paisley design. Those are all drawn, hand drawn by myself. And then what I think a lot of people don't fully understand. I'm a piece is, of shit. I'm starting to recognize that every single fucking paisley is different. Yeah, and they're all. I'm drawn. I'm really a piece of shit. Not at okay. all. <laughs> Not <laughs> I'm really starting to notice. Yeah. You said it down. What I do want you to recognize, and I would like people to fully understand, is this sandblasting part takes, I don't know, as long as making the piece, but it can because I gotta sit there and I gotta mask off all of this stuff that's not sandblasted. Masking off means I gotta cover it up, mm -hmm. and then I gotta get these stickers on, mm -hmm. and 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 put all these stickers on here, and then sandblast this stuff, 
And it's very time consuming and it's honestly my least favorite part, but I want to get the results. So sometimes yeah. we got to go through things we don't like to get the results we and want. And shout out to like guys like you, like uh, Jay Smart, who mm -hmm. does stuff on his certain pieces to make yeah. them look aesthetically more pleasing yeah. uh, to, to what they're trying to create. Yeah. Uh, I believe I've seen some pieces from Saiyan Glass uh, as well. Yeah, all uh, I'm, artists, I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking one more guy. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember his damn name. Uh, well, while you're thinking of that, I just want to shout out to d -Rec, Paco, some of these original guys who were in the sandblasting world, uh, you know, that, that inspired me. Go on. Muller. Oh, Peter Muller, yeah, he yeah. sandblasts almost yeah. all of his pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, the whole aesthetically know, pleasing looking He doesn't do like... much masking off of specific parts like this, mm -hmm. you know, or, or much graphics, but he does give that overall sandblasted look, which is very, very, it goes perfectly with his designs. Yeah, it definitely. No, yeah, the fact that, like, he'll sandblast everything, but the cover where you have that, uh, um, air hole where you're able to yeah, see the function yeah. and everything he'll go ahead and cover that area yeah. and other sections of it Perfect. like it's dope as fuck Absolutely. Uh, no but I mean yeah it's it's art man it's it's freaking art uh, being able to want exactly what you want to see on a piece before yeah. it's presented out to someone that definitely makes a lot of sense to me being someone who makes a I, a little easier, tedious as tedious well, but easier. But when it comes to like making uh, videos and editing videos, a lot of the reasons why I don't put out a lot of the stuff because it's not, I don't like it yet. Yeah. And I want to like, yes, Brian, it's going to take that much longer to go ahead and put this little shit there and fucking make yeah. it move and stuff like that. But I don't give a fuck. If you're That's not satisfied want, with it, you know, I mean, you can't expect, I mean, some people will like it, but at the end, it's, it's your signature on it, and if you're going to sign off on it, you know, you better be happy with it. Oh, yeah. If it's your portfolio, you better be proud of that thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm not proud of every single piece I've ever made, but at the time, I was because it was a little bit further than where I was. A lot of pieces might not, you might not notice, but there is advancements to it. So when you look at the first Moria, it looks crazy different than Moria 89. Mm -hmm. And 89 might not have as much detail as this one here. I don't even remember what number this one is, but they might not have as much detail, um, but they're... Six, yeah, 68. Yeah, 68, so, the reason why I was thinking six, I remember because when you got 68, I was like, damn, I was that far close for 69. Uh, Dang. yeah. That was yeah. a funny ass joke. And as a cancer, 69 is a big number for me. Um, but that's the thing is, is there's always an evolution and there's always uh, aesthetics and, and there's also behind the scenes the um, the way you put these things together. Sometimes they're yeah. a little cleaner. Sometimes you just move the neck in such a way that the posture is a little bit different or whatever it is. I mean, if we look at these two pieces, you could just see this being one of the first ones, the neck was way out in oh, front, wow. right? And this one, he's a little bit more standing upright and I prefer this posture to this, but that didn't mean that I wasn't proud of this when I first made it and I still am because this is a true representative of where I was at at that time. At that time, yeah, that's what and I'm saying. Yeah, 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 this yeah, yeah. Is a very, yeah. I would go to say that this is more special than this piece in a sense that this is how you get to here. Yeah. You gotta go through here to get to, get to here, there. and being able to show that, you know, it's um, it's, it's necessary in a way because sometimes people don't present things, and it just seems like they're overnight success or they're whatever it is. But as an audience, it's good to be a part of that journey and to feel that connection to the artist. You know, like this is where it began. You know, if you had one of Picasso's sketches. Right. You know, versus, you think that would be worth some money versus one of his full-on paintings? I know it would be. I know it's, it's, it's very critical to say, you know, this is what this was born out of, you know? Not to say that this is a, a sketch that's a finished piece. No, right, right, right. right. But, but it's a, it. no, yeah, it, it definitely makes sense because it's a, um, it's where he started from. It's what no one saw. It's what, uh... Yes, it's the what? journey. It's a part of being exactly. You're, you're oh, a part, definitely, yes. You're a part of journey, and without somebody buying my glass, I don't get to make more glass. Mm -hmm. I, glass costs money. Gas costs money. Oxygen costs money. You know, your time is worth 
more than any of those things, right. honestly. Because yeah. if we can't get time back, I can't go to the gas station and be like, yo, let me get some time, right? Yeah. So all of this time, none of it was a waste of my time. I all of that. it was an investment in myself and my audience. No, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And it's, it, it's something that really, like you said, time. Uh, it's just something that dawned to me in my head, like analogy kind of wise, like, yeah. let's say if that piece is the final product, right, quote unquote, that was the end of the time, right? Of that journey, of that particular, of that, of that journey, that particular hike, right? right? And this was the fucking hike itself, you know, the time, yeah. the climb, yeah, the beginning you know, everything that had to get fucking done in order to produce what people enjoy you know what i mean yeah. it's that's yeah let me say this man you know it's one thing to say and i know that like people love to be you know you might be a fan of music right but right or like you might be a fan of a team when they win the super bowl you might be a fan of a team when they win the world series but it's always the people that are most proud of, like you know what i followed this person this team when they were losing mm -hmm. right you're not a fair weather fan and not to say like you know oh, i was losing or anything like that but it's always some sort of a badge of honor when you were there at the beginning of the journey you know i knew about them back then i, I supported them back then you only were here when they were hitting you know and they got all of this accolades or whatever it may be right yeah so it's, it's, it's nice to be a part of an artist's journey and to support an artist when they need your support the very most. They don't need your support when they're supported by thousands and thousands of people. They need your support when they're learning to get to this. Exactly. Or this. They need the people. But I, I mean, I guess this is a question for you. The struggle of not having that many people supporting you on the idea of what you want to produce, did that make you want to produce it that much harder? Just, just because, like, let's say, like, if everybody agrees with your passion and what you want to do, it yeah. seems easier, a little bit more lenient to yeah. be like, oh, this is what it is. But when you're trying to prove something wrong to uh, the well, majority. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about when I started. I was making money, more money through hash and weed than I was making because I blindly, ignorantly felt like I had to create glass. So whether my glass sold or not, I had to make, I had to express myself. I had to go down this journey. Mm -hmm. And I was making these pieces that I believed in. And once in a while they were selling, you know, they were doing what they were doing. But I had this opportunity to go to a glass expo in Vegas uh, called AGE. I don't think it's around, and I know it's not around anymore. Yeah. And um, I built up this series of little gigantes and um i had been blowing glass for some time you know two three years and um it was selling here and there you know but it wasn't enough to me to stop selling hash and weed right um but when i went to age and i brought 15 pieces with me and within the first hour they, my whole bench was sold. Mm -hmm. I felt validated, right? I felt like, okay, I am a glass blower. And people took orders after it sold out. I went home with $30,000 in sales that first day. Damn. So the rest of the weekend, I had a cheese smile. Nice to meet you, thank you so much. Everything was beautiful. But if, it meant, but if it didn't sell, I would have had a hard time continuing on. Yeah. I would have had a hard time validating myself as, do I belong here? Mm -hmm. So that provided me with enough energy for years to know, right? Luckily, from that point on, until a year ago, I had a list of people that always wanted my glass. Now, after the pandemic, I made it, yeah, I made it through the <laughs> pandemic. The pandemic was one of my best years, actually. Everybody was home smoking. I sold more glass than I ever sold in my life through the pandemic. Bittersweet. The pandemic was a bittersweet situation. But it caught up. It caught up because of, after that, the whole industry took a hit. Mm -hmm. Nobody was spending money like they were spending. Now we're in a 
tough time with glass, you know, um, I'm not making a living off of glass right now. And um, I'm grateful for anybody that's showing love and support and I'm, you know, still selling glass here and there. Um, however, um, it's a tough time, you know, but I gotta say that up until that last year, I had a list and I felt very validated. And I still feel validated, I just know that it's tough for all, everybody, food's more expensive, life is expensive, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people can't get the extras in life. But that validation pushed me through. That, that for 10 years, I mean, I, I, I felt um, loved and supported and appreciated and, and everything because of what a beautiful thing it is to have the, the, the internet and to have people yeah. just, whether they're buying glass from you or not, just tell you, man, I love your art. And no matter how delusional they might be, they'll say things like, you're my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm just like, God damn, I'm not gonna tell you about all the other amazing artists that are way better than me, but I appreciate that you think I'm that guy, right? <laughs> because I'm just doing me. I can't do what you know other artists are doing. I can only do me. So the fact that you connect with me means the world to me, whether you spend money with me or not. Now, if you spend money with me and you support me and my family, right? Oh man, I I, I owe you the very best I can possibly make. Mm -hmm. You know, I owe you above and beyond whatever I can do because if to be an artist is a, a tremendous blessing you know it's not granted it's not given so yeah. the fact that I was validated and able to do that you know and hopefully will be able to continue to do that yeah yeah uh, I hope that answers your question I feel like I've I run on with these rants but yeah don't even worry about it bro i mean that's the whole point of the, of the podcast being able to fucking talk get everything all out yeah. you know what i mean uh yeah I, uh it's it's a struggle it's a struggle when you're an artist trying to go ahead and produce uh stuff to the world um and not only are you looking for this art to uh uh satisfy people but also satisfy your wallet you know and that being said you know being able to like uh, pay for everything that it needs to pay for and stuff like that and it, it's a rocky road it's a rocky road it's from being ups, able to valleys, ups and downs mm -hmm. less and more absolutely yeah and and Le that's why i said literally it's, less you know, as much as it can be a struggle like you're saying it's absolutely a blessing when things are good you mm -hmm. know when things are good and we're all you know thriving and i'm making you know money for doing what i love there's nothing better there's nothing better yeah no, yeah, absolutely. Because I'm making a living doing what I love, but people are so grateful on the other side because they've got this thing that they love that's a part of their day to day. You know, a lot of people, they smoke every day, and if you're smoking high quality hash or whatever, you know, you can't be smoking it out of something regular. Yeah. You need something that makes you an individual or expresses your individuality. And me being the person that they choose to provide that and them being so happy with it, it's a win-win. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, um, you know, yeah, convergence. I don't know why. I'm bad with words sometimes. Sometimes I look for that perfect word. But You're good, bro. Me, yeah. being, me being high and drinking like before and after the podcast, it's hard for me to get words together myself as well. Yeah. Don't worry about it. There's been times where I sound like a complete idiot, but, but no, you're good, man. it is I, what it is. I want to say, man, you know, Everything from when you're at La La Land to having me down for this, and I'm really looking forward to the event tomorrow because it's not often I get to mingle with my supporters and collectors. Um, you know, just, I, you know, I really, truly am really grateful for people like you that bring the community together. You know, whether it's through the podcast and they're watching this at home or wherever, or at an event, you know, or at a place like La La Land and you're just telling them about the pieces and presenting it to people, you know, you're a very big part of the process and the community. No, oh, thank you, bro. No, thank, thank you. you. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. I mean, it, it's something that, I mean, not only myself, when it comes to the events, I get a lot of support from all the vendors, um, from everybody fucking coming out and supporting the event to, um, all my homies behind the scenes, I, like no one really sees like, hey, if we, I got you, you need this done, let's, let's go ahead and get it done. Um, a lot of people recognize me as someone who really doesn't have any excuse. There's a lot of excuses for a lot of people in this world, but I, I'm a uh, healthy, young, 
uh, American guy living in California being able to have events and uh, meet a bunch of people without ever having a problem along the way. So like, I there's no excuse for anything that I that I'm doing problem. that I I'm can't sure do. I'm sure you've got certain yeah. problems. And there's always going to be something. There's always but, something, but at the end of the day, like it. Yeah, you, you get uh, it again. Done. Like you're I'm. Doing there's it. so many things I'm already naming. Like in, yeah. in the in my hands that like there's no excuse for me to getting everything done. You know, and. I'm glad you see that. All I all I could do is just be grateful, being grateful for for being in a position to be able to do so, and me not doing anything with that position makes me, I, in my eyes, a piece of shit in life. Like if well, I if I'm not doing anything with it, it's, it's like what shit, the hell, bro. I tell you, you know what, what I mean. The one thing that this world has too much of is excuses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So the way that you're taking that perspective on is a beautiful thing, and I I feel like. When you're trying to, maybe you're trying to give somebody a friend of advice or trying to help somebody and they just come back at you with all the excuses and you're like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done trying to help you. You know, when there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. And if you don't want to see it that way, that's your problem. Yeah. So it's beautiful that you see it you're, with that perspective and, and we need it, man. As, as a community and as a culture, you know, we, we need it. We need these gatherings. We need these relations, all of it. We really need it, especially when day-to-day -day life can be so difficult these days for some people. We need to be able to blow off the steam and have the get-togethers and, and, and get high together and, and, and enjoy each other's company. Absolutely. No, yeah, yeah, and that being said, I mean, with Hash Sundays going down tomorrow, right. and like you said, like being able to meet a lot of the people that you've uh, been able to... Um, you know, blessed with uh, with so many pieces. Um, I can't wait, man. Yeah, how's uh, what are you what are you expecting out of the event? I, I'm not going in with any expectations other than to um, say thank you to a lot of people um, and to right. ultimately, you know, have a good time and be a part of a good time because I don't get to do these things very often and. To be able to travel and to come to a place where, you know, it's tough because it's hard to be, I'm appreciated, right? You know, like, I'm not no more special than anybody else. I'm just a person doing my thing, you know? So it's very rare that anybody's like, yo, I'm an Uber driver and everybody's coming to see me drive Uber, right? Like, that's yeah, crazy. It's yeah, 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 yeah. crazy. It doesn't happen. So I'm just grateful that on some level, People are there to see me, so I'm not expecting any praise or any reward or anything other than the reward of just having a good time with people that appreciate what I you do. You can expect one, the first two. There's gonna be some people that are gonna be like, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what? It's weird and awkward sometimes, I but it that. is I not. That. It is not without appreciation. You know, I get it. I yeah, got yeah. people that I've fanboyed out too you know uh, you know I, I bro the day i meet Nas. yeah the day i meet Nas is the day i'm a fanboy for sure yeah but you know what's funny is uh when i met, first met i met earl sweatshirt mm -hmm. and i'm not the biggest fan of his music i like his music but when i saw him i was like man just your look you're a celebrity in a way that other people you know, I like Tyler, the creator, a lot more, but I met Earl Swift. It's like, oh, shit, it's Earl. And uh, I happened to be with um, Action Bronson, and he, and he was like, yo, calm down. Take it down a notch. And uh, <laughs> I was like, no, that's Earl Sweatshirt right there. That's sick as fuck. He never got to rap a word. He just got to be him. And I'm going to be excited to see him, <laughs> you know? And this was early, early in his career. Yeah, yeah, this but is fucking I, our I future felt days. myself... Like, heavy art Yo, let me take a picture and all that stuff. So, I, you know, I get it, you know, and there's definitely been other people that I felt that way about. So it's just weird being on that side of it if someone acts like that. But I get it and I appreciate it and I don't fault anybody for feeling that way. Sometimes, you know, you um, you, you just get touched by certain people in it, and it's their art, it's their personality, it's whatever it is. You just feel that connection and express yourself. By all means, express yourself, you know. Tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. We all need more of that. 
is way better than the opposite of someone being like, yo, fuck you, you ain't shit. No, for real. No, none of us need that. Other than the glass blowing and everything that, you, uh, that you've done, um, you've, uh, I remember a while back, we spoke about how you started a, uh, a mobile business, a bubble record business called uh, Soy That Key Records. Yeah, uh, more so my wife, um, but I'm always, just like she supports me and everything I do, I support her and everything she does and they're both family businesses, right? Right. So, um, she had been a big um, record collector and, um, you know, sometimes we're forced to do things and she had to part with you know, a lot of her collection a long time ago. Mm. But she was smart enough to uh, part with it to people where her records were always within reach, right? So friends and family and things like that. Nice. So um, it has always been her dream to be involved or to own a record store. And um, as much as I love music, that made me, just made me a little bit nervous to jump right in and get a store, right? Right, so right, right, right. we had a mutual friend Shout out to Otto, uh, Hood Rat Shit, who was selling a school bus. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. And not just a regular school bus, but a really nice short bus, stereo system in it, just, you know, lights. I mean, we were impressed when we saw it. Pretty much decked out decked already, out like nice bus. and fixed up for you. Okay. And, nice. And gutted and, and ready on the inside. And I says, you know, if we're going to do this record store, I think that this might be our, our um, the best way to go about it so we could be sustainable. Because if we open up a record store, we might only last a few months paying rent there, right? But if we do this, then we own the bus, we don't have to pay rent, and we can show up, pop up, wherever it's happening. Wherever it's popping, we can pop up. From the smallest thing to the bigger thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, she, yeah. Was that to, she was able to. That makes sense. She was able to procure <laughs> her records to reunite herself with mm. her records, telling, you know, all the people or some of the people that she got rid of her records to that, you know, hey, this is what I'm doing. And she was able to bring them back into her life, filling our whole home with records. Right. So now we have so many records in our house and then we've also gone out and gotten more records and uh we is there any specific genre that that no, was angled no. into I or mean, was it just like i mean you'd be surprised at the amount of hip-hop and you would think that it's just hip-hop but it's not it's right she's got everything because I was going to say, with with hip-hop comes a lot a sampling, of sampling, right? Right. right. So there's going to be a lot of music that you would go ahead and like... Uh, Absolutely. I mean, someone like myself, when I listen to a lot of the music and um, <clears throat> uh, something like, uh, for example, uh, Miss Fat Booty from uh, Most Def, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a great exact... That was a great sample from... Um, um, from Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. right? So going back to that uh, uh, that song, hearing the song, right? And, sh and like in my head, because I'm a big hip hop artist, trying to find uh, what my opinion would be the idea that gave him or that inspired him to yeah. produce that beat, yeah. you know? It's cool, it's cool to like, just like sit there and like try to wonder like what happened, you yeah. know? It was like, oh, this Absolutely. one. And records are one of those things that we gotta get back to in the sense of slowing down to listen to our music because it used to be you would get a cassette, a CD, a record, and you would read the inserts of these things mm -hmm. And you would read the lyrics in some cases and really connect with the artists and the music. And when you're listening to streaming music, you put it on, you don't necessarily connect in that same way. Right. You might not come back to, oh shit, I forgot that I love that song. But when you own a record and you're going through your collection and you're listening to one song, you might be flipping through your records. Oh, that goes with this perfect. And you're making new connections to the music in ways that you don't when it comes to 
flipping Shoot. yeah flipping the backside of that artwork and being able to see like the producers or like the credits the yeah cre news. credits the instruments of like who was playing what and yeah. that and then being like oh shit he also played or she also played you know this Samples. record as well yep. you know it's it's dope as fuck to be able to be like damn how many people were like working together and stuff like that yeah. um being able to like wonder the stories of how they got together and make that happen and yeah. shit. It, it's dope it's and, dope and as much skepticism as i had about the record uh, uh -huh. about us doing a record store i've been proven wrong people are more into records now than maybe ever before right which is crazy to me i i didn't think it was like that people are paying 200 dollars for a record bro you know and and all over the world right like we're putting some records online and they're being sold in other countries and you know it's it, it's it's really satisfying to show up to an event where there may not be a lot of people and there's all these vendors and none of them are selling anything but we have a crowd at our bus right and we make money that day and we leave like you know what it wasn't the greatest audience but we got an audience and we sold records based so off of what you guys are it's advertising been, it's now been, no yeah that's it's been satisfying and fun because talking about music is i oh. mean seeing what people buy seeing what people are looking at like seeing rec uh, it's a little bit heartbreaking seeing a record leave you i feel that right? i feel like, that oh like, you got yeah. that one shout out to you because of, i love that record and i yeah. want to keep that record but good good scoop good scoop and Not that's for fun sure. and it's fun it's it's connecting with people and anytime you get to connect with people music sessions mm -hmm. whatever it is that's a beautiful thing and I mean, we've had our, our conversations on and on about about hip hop, about music in general from like the 80s, 90s, 2000s yeah. and so on. Uh, that being said, I actually have this card game right here called Lyrically Correct. All right. Um, and basically the objective of the game would be, um, you know, perfect example, you know, where was up, where was Usher at seven o'clock on the dot? The his drop top. Exactly, on the drop top, cruising, cruising the, the street. Block, right. You're cruising the block, man, cruising the streets for sure. So, but I mean, since we have a more extended uh, uh, vocab, or not, yeah, I guess extended vocabulary, like extended knowledge on um, on music, I do have an 80s version of it as oh, well. Man, no, so not, we could go into like. I'm not sure. I, if it's a 90s version. This is a 90s, 2000s, this is 80s. That's more likely. But I'm nervous that I might not be able to get any of these. I know some lyrics, certain people, but I, the 80s. The 80s one? The 80s one. I mean, I know 80s, but yeah, I'll be more confident with that. More confident with this one? All right, yeah. for sure. For sure. Let's go ahead and mix a couple up right here. That's a cool game though, I like this. It's it's an interesting game because I mean we all listen to these to these songs and we all grew up with them. Um so like, like you don't gotta shuffle anything you pull off the top right now. We're doing yeah. all right. And and I and I gotta be one hundred man. I'm more prone to know uh East Coast. It's all over. It's all over for sure. I know sure. some people on the West Coast, but uh, you know, I feel that there is. A I listen to a lot more East Coast hip hop than I do uh, listen to West Coast hip hop. I, love I mean, West I live Coast out here, and I know it's like you know all the more popular mainstream stuff. I know it. I know it. Okay, I feel that for sure. But if you're gonna pull out an E40 lyric, it's it's few and far. I love E40. <laughs> I love E40, but it's few and far, right? uh let's see there okay this one's easy this one should be a pretty easy one you say you're in the east coast this is the biggie question all right okay so which magazine did biggie read word up word up magazine yes sir word yes, up sir. magazine <laughs> that's the one for sure I mean, see, yeah. I, that's as easy uh, as it's going to get. All right, cool. I, if he, he said that's as easy as it's going to get, anything after that, geez, Louis. We're going uphill now. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. How many earrings did L O Cool J want his girl to have? At least two pair, right? I think it was at least two pair. At least two pair. Two pair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At least two pairs. See, two I'm telling you. Man. Well, well, is, you know. Come on, bro. Early. And that could go toward, oh, no, that's early 90s. You yeah. can't. No, you can't mess he with that. He was there bro. in 88. 
Yeah, he he was his career did start in the eighties, but mm -hmm. it did progress into the nineties and then to early two thousands mm -hmm. with that head sprung song. So I mean, yeah, he's he's very very known. Uh, let's see here. Do we know Ashanti? A little bit. Or Deborah Cox? I don't know it until you say it. Then it, you know. Okay. In the song "Baby," I don't know. By Ashanti, <laughs> he said no. <laughs> no, but go, but go. <laughs> give me the question. I don't know uh, the name of the song, but if you sing the song or give me a okay. lyric to the it song. It went, it went, baby, 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 All right. baby. Don't quit okay. your day job. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> too late. Shout out to Lala. <laughs> but in the song Baby by Ashanti. All right. Ashanti said his kisses make her lips quiver. And when he touches her, what happens? If I had to finish the lyric, which I don't remember, I would say something shiver. I don't know. It just <laughs> sounds right to me, so I don't know. What would be shivering? I don't know, man. Lips? I don't know. Uh, these are R&B. We're going. We're moving to R&B. But because uh, I ain't gonna lie, you're you're fifty percent with I'm the halfway, answer. Yeah. You're halfway yeah, yeah, with the I'm, answer, bro. I'm happy with fifty percent. You're gonna have okay. to be happy with fifty percent. <laughs> Her whole body shivers. All right. Her whole yeah. body shivers. So I mean that makes sense. All right. You know, I'm so I'll go ahead and give you that one still. All right. I mean so, so far it's been three for three. Three for three. Three that's, for three. That's quit now. I was able to on three, I, I fucking I guess. No, out. we can we can continue. Let's see. Who can't Jagged Edge forget about in Where the Party at? Oh, you stumped me there. Where I got to hear you. I don't know my girl and my car, yeah. Can't forget about my... My thugs can't forget about my thugs. thugs. Yeah, and who else? And Ooh, my thugs can't forget about my thugs. And who else? And the... Man, I'm gonna fuck up the Larry. Y'all are in the bloods. Are you in the bloods? Nah, I'm in the bloods. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to the boys. And, and all the love? I don't know. Can't forget about the thugs. Thugs and all right, here you I got 50%. So, uh, the other one was the girls, and, and, and all my girls yeah. for the party. It's and a good song. Fun. I should have. Oh, it's a great song. I should have. Oh, shit. Here's another one, uh, another Jagged Edge. This one's a little bit easier. Right. Um, where did Jagged Edge say to me? You got me thinking about Usher, fuck. It's easy to you, and then make me feel bad now that I can't think of it. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'll give you a clue. It's something you did while you were making uh while you were making this guy right here. Where did he say Where did that where did Jagged Edge tell you to meet? At the spot. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm stumped on that one. At the altar with your white dress. Oh, Maybe yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Your waitress. There we go. We ain't getting no younger. Alright, let me not sing. Which was crazy, like how you told me you, you were making this guy in between of everything happening. I got, I, yeah, and I, that guy was made at DFO, um, some of it, and then, yeah. Yeah, that's when we got married. It, yeah, absolutely. It makes me feel a part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's cool. Okay, here's here here's an OG song, great song as well from Ti. What does Ti have the crowd yelling? What does Ti have the crowd yelling? It's too vague for me. I like Ti, man. Bring them out, bring them out. Is that it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Gotta hold the crowd yelling. Bring them out, bring them out. Yeah. Jeez Louise, man. I like I, my I like my batting average right now, but as every, each card you pull, I'm like. <laughs> okay, here you go. Uh, white cleft. Right, white cleft. White cleft. Okay, white cleft. White cleft said he'll be gone till when? November. November. Yes, sir. November it is. You gotta do the deeds. You gotta do the dirt. And shoop. By salt and pepper. Yeah. I well, had the privilege of meeting. Oh hell yeah! All right. I'll go ahead and ask that question of how after this but uh and shoot what was peppa's weakness i 
And I was... <laughs> I said, yes, yes, I don't know, man. Are you going to say yes? Sir. Men? Men? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Men? I was, I, Men? I, was yep. there. I was there. In my head, I was there. How 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 were you able to meet? Uh, so I actually was it Peppa I, or Salt and Peppa? No, it was actually um, Salt. Okay. And um, oh man, one of Kid and Play. I forget who's Kid and who's Play. And this was a very long time ago. Kid in, Kid was a, was taller, high with high, high flat top. top. So high flat Play top. and Salt okay. came into my job at the time. Uh, I was working at Kinko's fresh out of school and um, they, they came in and <laughs> I remember I was working in, in the computer site and they were getting copies for something yeah, and yeah, I yeah. went over and I pushed my man out of the way I was like I got this and I, I knew exactly who they were right away and I just started talking their ear off and um, they were really cool man they were Hell really yeah. cool and it was cool to meet them and um yeah, just just working at Kinko's, just working at the job, and and the, and you'd be surprised how many rappers came in to get shit printed out. That's so funny. Yeah, I also that, met. Um, was that Kinko's out in? Uh, it was in New York. New York. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That makes yeah. more sense. Yeah. And I also met one of the Fat Boys when I was working there too. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. Prince Marky D. Oh shit. Yeah. That's what's up. That's dope as fuck. Freaking yeah. a. I mean, the random places that you'll go ahead. Uh, I met a couple of the Lakers at a uh, paintball uh, spot out in uh, L.A. Um, I think it was Swaggy P, but nice. oh no, no no it was a uh, um, it wasn't Swaggy P. Who was it? Uh, I forgot who it was. But long story short, I remember he was. Did injured. you know that it was them? I or knew did that someone it was tell them. you, no, or did so, you notice? People? So I knew it was them, but I remember him being injured, and I asked them. Hey bro, should you be should you be out here since you're fucking injured? And he looks at me, kind of mad dogging me like it ain't my business. And he, I mean, you're right, it ain't my business. But I mean, <laughs> you are in the L.A. Lakers, so I'm gonna go ahead and say something. I'm just, yeah. you know what I mean? Man, <laughs> that shit was hilarious. I was just like, okay, I'll just do me. You know, I am, I am the shorter person in this scenario, so I'm gonna just do what I gotta funny. do. But you, you you did say you had an ankle fuck injuries so I, I, I'm just saying out here playing paintball is not gonna help <laughs> just throwing them under the bus huh kinda yeah yeah I guess well I was in uh, man, it's kind of a dumb story but I was in Florida in Jacksonville mm. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna blow them up but a, a football player was hanging out with us mm -hmm. and uh, we were all smoking blunts and um, he was smoking the most and drinking the most. most. And it was Saturday night. And he had a game the next day. Jeez. And uh, I, I was just watching him do his thing and wondering, man, do you need to be doing all this tonight? Because I've, I've heard that athletes in general could drink and smoke like a motherfucker. Like, yeah, well, he shouldn't have been because if he I, got traded uh, after that season, he had a... He was doing pretty good, and he had a lot of potential, Matt Jones. And, um, yeah, but he his career kind of went down in Jacksonville, and I, it was no mystery to me. You know, when you have an opportunity to be in the NFL, you know, take the season off and, and, and you know, of, of smoking and drinking and focus on your football and what you got to do. Or do it during the off season. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, Are we doing any more of these? I, I got a couple more right All here right, for you. All right. All right. Uh, what did Biggie tell you to do after you throw your rolly in the sky? Oh, man. Wave them side to side? Yes, sir. Wave them side to side. All right, all right. I mean, I was, it takes me a second to get there. I was man. thinking you didn't want to answer that because of Diddy, but I mean. <laughs> I, it, 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 <laughs> Yo, I'm overwhelmed with this Diddy shit, man. I don't want to hear no more about it, man. I feel you know, it, bro. It's too I, much. It's too much. It, it makes sense. I mean, it, whatever happens to the guy happens to him, and if he's... He deserves whatever yeah, he's getting, he, you know what I'm saying? He deserves everything he's a, that's happening to him. He's clearly a piece of shit. But... Fuck, a lot of my music is fucking ruined due to this situation. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. You know, uh, I'm not, I'm not. You, you, you know, don't ask me no Busta Rhymes or Diddy questions. I got you. I don't you. want to hear about neither of them. I got you. 
Yeah. That being said, though, you know how much R. Kelly I had to delete out yeah. of my shit after this whole situation? R. Kelly, like, damn. R. Kelly was bad. Bad. But and I, Diddy is downright evil. Yeah, no, I feel that. Yeah. Very, very heavy. Very, very heavy. heavy. All right, all right, for sure. Next, next, next. But anyway, Monica. We, we all love Monica, oh, no, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. What should you do if Monica wants to be alone? No, it, yeah. If she wants to be alone. Mm. Can I call a lifeline or something? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we could call D-Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he got the answer. We need some metal. He I was about to say, we're going to need some. Metal. We're going to need some Black, <laughs> Black Sabbath or something. Yeah. If we want him to answer the question. <laughs> I know the song and I could probably sing it, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing. It's don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Don't All take right. it personal. I'm okay with that, man. I, you know, when you touch on the R and B stuff, I know the songs, but the lyrics don't come to me. Like if we're asking, if we're talking about, you know, anthems and Biggie. And I feel you. I feel you. But I mean, that's the cool part about this game. You yeah, know, it's it's, cool. it's, it's like a cool little like it's a cool game. little freaking word game. I like you it. know, it has a bunch of different uh different What's songs it from that. Here? It's called Lyrically Correct. Lyrically Correct. All right, yeah. shout out to them. I don't know if they're a sponsor, but they should be. <laughs> I would not mind. I would not mind if they're a sponsor. I literally grabbed one of each one, I think. I even grabbed like an extension nineties pack just in case. This is funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is hella cool. But I mean Hey, don't take it personal. Just how, like, I mean, hey, don't take it personal if you don't end up getting a piece of Hash Sundays. Hey, I know you ended up making a couple pieces out there for, for Hash or Sundays. Or make, like, Gangstar and take it personal. I don't know. Hey. <laughs> Why not? Why not? It's but your I mean, choice. It's your choice. But we do have a raffle going on. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for a collab with... A uh, one of one. Something yeah. Something I've never made before. I made something, you know, that uh, that's unlike anything I've ever made. Mm-hmm. And, um... Yeah, it's cool. I can't wait for tomorrow. Can't wait Me for too, everybody man. to fucking uh, to Me pop too. out, have a good time, being being able to meet you. And, and this will uh, probably go up after the event happens. So we had right. a great time. Yeah, it was amazing. And if you weren't there, you probably missed out. Yeah, I mean, if you weren't there, you probably did miss out. I mean, we try to go ahead and have it a day after PuffCon when everyone's out, you know. And on top of that, if you weren't able to come to PuffCon, you came here. You came me, here, you chose how to say, good man, time. Whatever this man is doing, support because, you know, he's doing great things. And, and, and it's all for the community. And if you missed out on this event, make sure you're at the next one. Make sure you're there. You know what I'm saying? They're always beautiful events. I always get tagged in all these crazy pictures with all the people in such a great community vibe everybody's just doing their thing and having a good time and i love to see it and i would love to be a part of more of them i'm too far away but i'm so grateful that i get to be here for this one not far away enough because we were able to have you out yeah we were able you. to have you out and have a good time with Glad us to be here. um it's something that we are looking to have a lot more in the future and i mean thank you bro yeah i mean one of the very few people that i'll again like i said in the last uh last podcast this guy breaks and I'm able to have it back in a matter of like two days. Oh yeah. Like this yeah. makes no fucking sense to anyone in in the culture whatsoever. Yeah. Like how how does a piece break and then come back to you in your hands within two business days when this person is out of state? I don't know, but all I know is like the dedication you have not only towards the glass but you know that's not always the case for everybody don't go thinking that you send me a broken piece you can get it back in two days <laughs> all right Oops. in this scenario that happened right but that is not always the case and 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 i'm grateful that i was able to do that for you no yeah thank you bro like i mean yeah that we have a we have a special relationship that we're able to uh they were able to do so but i mean that being said the dedication that you have towards uh, glass art towards art in general uh, hip-hop your family and, and everything you do bro I just want to say thank you so much yeah. for literally just being you uh, and lot not letting anything uh, anything uh, stop you from yeah, doing so likewise thank you very much man that really means a lot to be um, appreciated and, and invited down for this event to be a part of these things 
And, um, you know, just thank you for all of your support from La La Land and going forward, man. I really appreciate you and everybody that you are associated with, man. So many people have hit me up because of you. So thank you very thank much, you, man. It's it's all we're trying to do. Just bring it, being, bringing everybody that we love. Doing a great job, together man. Keep doing And being able to do that, But thank you so much again, man. I appreciate you for everything. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, man. Once again. And thank you, all of you. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead if you have anything coming up and at the end of the year or anything you're doing specifically, go ahead. Well, you know, let I'm, everybody I'm, know. I'm I'm moving on to some other endeavors. You know, Soy de Aki Records is a big deal. Check us out on Instagram, give us a follow there, Soy de Aki. Um, I'm always gonna have glass and art as a part of my life. It, it may be fewer and further in between right now because of the way the market is, but to anybody watching this, hit me up, mention this podcast, I'll hook you up with a special deal. Um, you know, and um, just much love and respect to everybody out there. Keep following your passions and, uh, you know, just continue to do you and do your best at that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Joints and Drinks podcast, full circle moment going on right here. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's fucking crazy from, like, just w seeing your stuff on IG to like having you right here and being able to have a conversation, have a great ass fucking time. Yeah. And yeah, coming to the event tomorrow for Hash Sunday. It's gonna be dope as fuck. Hash Sundays. Yes, sir. Thank you everybody so much for for watching. Shout out to all our sponsors. Shout out to all you guys. And tune in for next one. Till then, fuck your mint. We're out this bitch. Yeah. Y'all have a good night. Peace.